Let's go to the crypto space now where Ladi is standing by. Hi, Ladi. Uh, hi, Eni. Well, uh, maybe you might even have some Bitcoin <laughs> under the pillow. Who knows? But uh, it's extreme fear. Uh, right now, we're still seeing, you know, in this market, still at 11 points uh, over 100. Uh, sentiment is still, you know, gearing towards the bears. But at the end of the day, we're seeing a little rebound in the market, some relief rallies, even though uh, global equities market are not looking so good at this time. But we're seeing some relief happening uh, right in the crypto market. We've seen the market cap, $900. Uh, billion dollars. That's up by 1.10%, and we see volume traded down 4.89%. Bitcoin dominance 43.05, and uh, see the price of Bitcoin there ranging uh, between the 21,000 and 19,800 uh, range this morning. It's up 2.20%. We've seen a couple of altcoins also rebound uh, this morning, but there's still risk of uh, downside uh, price action for Bitcoin. That's what mo most analysts are saying. Doesn't seem it's out of the woods yet. Volume traded, $29.10 billion. And we see Ethereum there also struggling to hold that $1,000 mark. It's up 1.65%, $1,096 per coin. Volume traded, $15.04 billion. And we see it's mostly green on the top also by uh, market cap. And a lot of uh, tra trading and uh, shorting going on in, in this market. Now, let's bring in Amara Sache now, uh, eCash creator. Uh, join us right here on the show. Great to have you. Hey, great to be here. Yeah, so uh, Amari, talking about uh, shorting, you know, these markets, now we've seen the shorters have been having fun since Bitcoin fell from around the $30,000 uh, range uh, all the way to about $17,000. And we've seen ProShares, ETF giants, looking at uh, creating an, a, 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 a short uh, ETF uh, for uh, some of these investors so that they can bet on when Bitcoin is going to go down or go up. How are you seeing this uh, development? Um, well, it's not really going to help uh, price stability, that's for sure. But on the other end, that's probably the beginning of some sign that we may be near the bottom, right? Because if shorting is starting to become mainstream, then you know that means that a lot of people have shorting in their mind as uh, you know, the, the, the option for crypto. And so that means that most people expect it to go down. Usually that's a sign that, you know, you are near the bottom. Um, same way as we when we were near the top, like roughly a year ago, everybody was super enthusiastic about any and every project. Um, so, you know, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Um, so, you know, it's an indicator that people are fearful and therefore there is probably a time to start being greedy. I'd still be cautious though. There are still some projects that look a bit shaky that may still bring the space down a bit, like USDD being one of them. It's been depegged for, what, like two weeks now and holding at 0 0.92, something like that. So that's a bit scary. We don't quite know what's going to happen with that. But, you know, we right. may see a couple of projects fall, but... Those, well, but those looking kind at of this, kind of indicate to me that you know probably the bottom is going to be somewhere in the summer. Yeah, it will be quite interesting to find you know that bottom. Every trader is looking for the bottom, even in global uh, equities uh, market. But you know, with this uh, ETF, you know, uh, coming out in the U.S., do you think uh, traders are going to buy into it at this point? It's it's difficult to say um, clearly. ETF appeals to more traditional investor, more than crypto people. Um, and, you know, how much those investors are in, interested to have some exposure to crypto is like remains to be seen, especially right now when the market is very low, uh, people are probably gonna want to keep some distances with it, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, looking at uh, Bitcoin now, we're seeing, you know, the price, you know, is quite is struggling you know, at, at this point, trying to stay above that $20,000 uh, mark, and it did touch 17000 You know, there's a lot of speculation here, you know, for the bottom, but what price is, is looking attractive to you? Um, so, you know, right now, to me, I, I don't know if it's the bottom or not, but right now, to me, the price of you know, many assets looks already attractive uh, because we're in the bear market. Um, it's very, very difficult to time the bottom. I know that some people want to do that, but, you know, unless you are an expert, I would advise against doing that. And I would advise to 
go with a strategy that is more on dollar cost averaging, you know, where you buy at several points in time and you won't get the best price, but you won't get the worst price. You would get like an average price, hence the name. Um, and, and as to what I said, you should be looking into, you should look at assets that have strong fundamentals, you know, that have an actual use cases. Uh, all the assets that, like, look at how people are selling you the asset. If people are telling you, oh, you should buy this asset because it's going to go up in value so much, it's probably a bad bet because what they are selling you is it going up in value. But if they were convinced that it was the case, they wouldn't be selling that to you. They would be keeping it. Um, so that's probably a bad bet. However, projects that are like, oh, this is useful because we are building this and this and that, and, and we expect you know, that to generate demand, then those are probably good bet for the next two years or so. Right, for the next two years. All right, but let, let's look at uh, XEC. Now, we know that you know, Avalanche uh, integration, that conversation has been going on for a while. Now, how's it looking? Um, it's, it's looking pretty good. So right now, all the clients that people can download and, and run are compatible with Avalanche. Um, it hasn't activated on mainnet yet. And there are a few reasons for that. There are a few edge cases that we are running out, but, um, you know, it's, it's looking pretty good. And, um, you know, the bear market is when the building happens. Uh, so right. I would invite people to look at those teams that are building during the bear market and, and, and go with that. Uh, you know, during the bull market, everybody is, is going crazy, but the real exactly. building happen with the bear market. And this is what gets built during the bear market that triggers eventually the next bull market. Building in the bear market. Thank you so much, Mar Sache, uh, ECAS. Thank you. It was great having you. All right, now let's look at the top of the market cap. We've seen BNB there, $223. Seen uh, bounces across uh, board in the crypto space. XRP, still that 32 uh, cents range up 2.46%. And look at the top five gainers. We've seen double digit gains this morning with Matic there, 50 cents up 26.48%. And Engine, uh, Sandbox, we've seen most of these uh, metaverse uh, platforms getting into the top gainers counter. Engine there, 51 cents up 15%. Uh, Sandbox is 97 cents, trying to get above that dollar mark. And we see Flow. They're a dollar fifty-seven cents up about ten point nine six percent, and top five losers seen more single-digit losses this morning. Uh, this one had a run uh, synthetics. They had a run recently, went up about eighty percent. We've seen a, uh, a, a couple of profit taking uh, there. It's down eight point two eight percent this morning. Waves uh, platform there six dollars thirty-six cents down three point eight four percent, and we see BitTorrent there less than a cent there down one point zero eight percent. But we're not seeing uh, stable coins on this counter. So it shows that uh, the traders are still uh, have some skin in that market and trying to look for some uh, fundamentally sound uh, cryptos at this point and trying to get back in there and see if they can make some gains. So in, it's not looking uh, so bad this morning, but we know we still have Friday, you know, tomorrow. We know how Which Friday is normally is, a red Friday. Yeah, we know how Fridays <laughs> normally go, but who knows? Who we knows? might see a switch. Yeah, tomorrow. let's watch tonight, midnight, yeah. and see what will happen. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laddie.